This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Uh, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about design trends, uh, mostly looking at theme design and themes that have come out in the past couple months. You know, what does the landscape look like? What do, what do WordPress themes look like now as opposed to like a year ago? They're always changing. Uh, so I'm Mel Choice. Um, I'm a. I live here in Boston uh, as a UI UX designer. I work at Automatic, um, and you can find me on all these various places on the internet. So I think the the first thing I want to talk about tonight is visual design trends. So like physically, like what, like what you see uh, with themes. And so a trend that I've noticed is that design kind of trickles down from client. So there's a bunch of a uh, bunch of shops in the WordPress ecosystem uh, who do mostly client work. So they'll do really awesome client sites, and then those kind of designs trickle down to premium themes, and then eventually trickle down to free themes. So one of the first design trends I've noticed in the probably the past like six months to a year is big images. So big images are the new sliders. So here we have uh, the Forefront theme. It's a theme we have on WordPress.com. It's got a nice big image. It's actually interesting. I think I'm triggering the responsive sites with, with uh, my screen resolution. Uh, then we have another, another theme called uh, Full Frame. It's a photo, like a photo blogging theme. And this one is kind of fun because it's just like big image after big image after big image. And then superhero. Has anyone ever heard the, the term like hero image? I only just recently learned it was a term. I like saw it in like a plugin, and I was like, I have no idea what this is. But apparently, it just refers to like a really big image. So, that's the trend. It's an old advertising term. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That would be why I have no idea. Don Draper invented it or something. <laughs> so yeah, big images are in. Also, big text. So I guess the web is getting bigger as our devices are getting smaller. There's definitely been a focus that I think started with a, like a lot of the web superheroes um, to go really minimalist and just bring in really big type. So they're like their body font size is at least 18 pixels or higher, like 18 to like 24 pixels for just your your basic reading. And uh, this is something that I really appreciate. Um, I used to have perfect 2020 vision, but the older I get, the worse my vision gets. And since I haven't gotten glasses yet, I like being able to read huge text on a website. Like, look, that's huge. But it just it's so easy to read, and it's so nice, and it's so clear. And it's, uh, it's interesting, because I feel like there used to be a trend of doing smaller text, especially on, like, business corporate websites. And you're like, oh, man, this is, like, 10 pixels. What does it say? This is a fun theme, uh, TD Writer, blogging-focused. So, once again, nice big text. And big images, too. So you just have a, a really easy time reading it. This is another fun theme called Book Light. It's on WordPress.com. Um, I really like it because it's like super simple and almost like made like you're, you're reading a book instead of you know reading a blog. So... Flat design. Okay, so who knows about flat design? Does anyone have any feelings, opinions about flat design? Do you want to, do you want to, what's your, what are your feelings? I'll, I'll, I'll let you take it away. Okay. <laughs> so for those uh, who haven't really uh, been keeping up to date with web design trends, flat design uh, is a style that just does away with textures, uh, with different forms of lighting, with shadows, and goes totally flat. So some characteristics that are part of flat design uh, usually include really bright colors or just really bold colors. Uh, 
putting things in boxes. So lots of like little sections of boxes. And it really, the pioneer uh, for flat design was actually Microsoft uh, with their, their new uh, Metro style design. And it kind of really like struck a chord with designers who had been doing such like overly textured, overly shadowed, overly gradiented work for so long that like, hey, we could get rid of everything. So now we're seeing this pop up in WordPress themes. So like with this, um, you can see this like really bright, not bright, but like really like strong, bold color. These greens, it's simple. There are no shadows, no gradients. It just keeps going on. So lots of like big, huge swaths of solid colors. Yeah, so let's look at these. <clears throat> so this one's kind of fun because uh, it's got a lot of different colors going on. Um, and a lot of the work that they show, that they show in, like showcase in their demo for the theme uh, is flat design itself. So sometimes it's a little misleading because even though these have shadows, they're technically flat shadows, not actual like, like gradiated shadows. <laughs> so it's another, uh, like another trend that shows up in flat design uh, is making these, like, these flat details. So once again, you know, look at the colors, lots of white surrounding bold colors. This is really confusing. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so apparently uh, the screen resolution is so low for the projector that it is triggering the responsive states for like all of the sites that I'm going to right now. <laughs> so, do, you, do anyone have any opinions? I just like hearing, you know, what, what people say. Well, I think that flat design is going to be become even worse because the new iOS 7 from Apple is being Metroized by the, the new uh, superstar within the design group. Oh, here, here's actually the funny thing about iOS 7 is everybody says that it's flat, but it's really not. Uh, it has a lot of, uh, it has very subtle textures in places. Um, I, would, I would say that uh, I've seen little bits of shadows. It's not totally flat. It's definitely flatter. It's going for like a cleaner, lighter aesthetic, but it's not going like pure flat. So... That's uh, something I've noticed is everyone like, oh, is, you know, iOS 7 is flat. But if you look at it, there's a lot of little details that are textured, that are, uh, I don't know, they're, they're kind of building their own style that's flatter, but also, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it. A lot of people also like to use flat as its opposite to steer more flat. Yes. What did she say? Uh, so a lot of people like to use flat as uh, the opposite of skeuomorphic. So skeuomorphism is pretty much <sighs> definitive, like, Apple pre-iOS 7. So you have, like, stitched leather and, like, fuzzy build, like, like fuzzy pool tables and, like, all these different, like, textures and gradients in it. It's made to mimic real life. But the, the interesting thing about skeuomorphism isn't necessarily what it looks like, but how it behaves. So it's a, so your, your calculator apps, I'm sure everybody has a calculator app on something, they're always designed to look like calculators, like real-life calculators. And it doesn't matter if they take the shadows away from that. It's still designed to look and feel like a calculator you would hold in your hand. So flat things can actually be skeuomorphic. There are some people that say that iOS 7 is still a little bit skeuomorphic because instead of uh, the apps mimicking real-life objects, like, like, like the texture of a chair or a floor, they're mimicking uh, plastic and glass. So just a different kind of skeuomorphism, much more subtle. Yes? I'm just seeing this for the first time, but I like it. I mean, and it feels like it's not like Yeah. You know, sites... It looks like, like, fake, like fake brick or fake wood. You can tell when something isn't real. And you're like, man, this looks really tacky. Like, that's what skeuomorphism has really come to be the more it was used. Uh, so flat 
design is really nice and really refreshing because it like totally does away with that, and it's just like pure and clean and simple. Uh, but it also has its downfalls. So. Do you, is it just the like the big text? Do you think just takes up too much room on the page? Yes. Yeah, but also you can't really tell what's in there. Just so hard, harder to scan. Uh, okay. Okay. So it's usually a problem with hierarchy. So uh, you don't have enough uh, contrast in sizes between your text. So things you really want to call out should be you know bigger or bolder or different color uh, than things you want to diminish. So say you're, you have an article on the page. Uh, your article should be what you should be focused on. And maybe your widgets use a smaller font size. Or they're like a lighter gray instead of like a dark gray or a black. So. Are you suggesting that as a solution? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would say that that would be a solution to uh, like a problem with big. Is that everything can't be big. Some things have to be smaller. So you need to have appropriate contrast between elements. So. That's a, a problem. A lot of things are big, and then you go down, 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 big, 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 and then no one wants to make it. That's just poor design. That's all. But there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, there, there's a lot of bad design on the web. There's a lot of bad design. I usually like to keep my blogs pretty simple. Yeah, I mean, you can have really simple but big. Let me show, uh, do any of you guys use Medium? So Medium is a new writing platform. Uh, Let's go here. Um, it's really simple, and it's it's just this. So all you do is you can just read. There's nothing distracting you, and the text is really big, but it's easy to go through it all. And then when you get down to like the bottom, like this is all much smaller because it's not what you're supposed to be focusing on. You're supposed to be focused on the writing. Cool. So I'm gonna move on. Animations. It's probably. Uh, Something that it's something that I've seen a lot of in base themes recently. Um, I also think it's one of the most problematic new design trends. So let's see an example of this. I guess that one loaded pretty fast. That one. Yeah, so this one isn't that bad. It's just simple, like the text fades in. But on some of these, like, this is excessive. This is like <laughs> hearkening back to the days of Flash. We can animate, so we are animating. So this is a trend that I would actually recommend against. And this is just the theme you buy. So it's just like, it's not even you, you're, you're adding it. It's something that's built in. So I would say this is something that, like, encourages bad design. Is like building in all these base animations like this. It's like showing off in a way that's hard to read. And it's really distracting. Like that guy, he just like popped up. <laughs> no, no, no. Stock photo man. Stock photo man. <laughs> so yeah, this one too. Yeah, and this one has it as you scroll down. So it's like extra confusing. And you're like, oh God, what's going on? Yeah, just too much animation. And I'm seeing it everywhere. Like these, I think, were just three of the top, like, 20 themes of uh, Theme Forest right now uh, in the, like, the WordPress themes section. And uh, I'm pretty sure they were all in, like the, the, like, the top row. Just these three themes. So, like, everyone's doing it. And it's another thing that, you know, I've seen trickle down from client sites uh, down into premium. And my guess is that it's going to trickle down into free themes as soon as people catch up. I actually don't know anything about Genesis at all. Sorry. Uh, so these are, I'm pretty sure all of them are either premium or free themes for .org. 
Um, some of them also appear on .com. A lot of the ones I'm showing from .com are actually partner themes. So they're, they're themes that we develop uh, in partnership with other, uh, other places like Theme Foundry or, I don't know, there's a lot of uh, theme shops. So I'm pretty sure you can get them all on .org, though, for .org, for a self-hosted installation. Cool. So now we're kind of done looking at, uh, looking at specific themes, and we're going to go into more, um, more trends with you know, planning and building sites. So one would be flexibility. We're increasingly having more and more things that we need to deal with. So devices, you know, smartphones, tablets, laptops, big monitors, etc. cetera. Um, and we need to start figuring out how to make websites that handle all of these things. Uh, different screen resolutions, um, in addition. There's just so many different factors now that we all have to take account. So responsive, you know. I would say that any new site you're putting out should be responsive from the start. And I think that's a pretty strong thing to say, but especially if you're making themes, and especially if you're making premium themes, you're not going to sell unless it's responsive. It's a huge buzzword, and it's gone from bleeding edge to common at this point. So if you're making themes, they should be responsive. This is a fun gif. It's uh, the life of a designer. Doing responsive, resizing your browser. <laughs> so now we're also moving towards resolution independence. So things were simple when we had one resolution. When we were like, oh, I have my computer, you know, my images all look the same, whatever. And then smartphones with higher resolution screens came out, and then Retina MacBook Pros came out, and now it's just a big free for all. Uh, I didn't really realize how much of a problem it was until I started doing more browsing on my phone. And now I, did, like, I just got a Retina computer, and I'm looking at things, and I'm like so, so sad when they're not Retina, especially apps. So moving towards a, re like a resolution-independent web is the way to go. Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. The good thing about flat design is that you don't need images for it. Um, it's kind of funny, actually. We spent so long fighting for things like gradients and drop shadows to be in, like, included by default in browsers. And as soon as we got it, we were like, okay, we're, we're not going to use them anymore. We're just going to have flat. Everything's going to be flat. So that's one way, is to just only use CSS to style. Don't use any images. And another, another way is to uh, use scalable, scalable things. So uh, have any of you used any icon fonts? So it's like a, instead of using uh, like PNGs for your icons, you can actually import a font that's just like a web font file, and it's for icons. And there's a couple different ways to do it, uh, like to call up uh, these icons, and there's just dozens and dozens of them out there. Uh, WordPress core. Um, there is a strong chance uh, that for the 3.8 release, which is going to feature a new admin UI, uh, we'll, we'll have icons uh, in core. And uh, there's also a set of icons released by uh, another WordPress designer, uh, Johan Asmussen. I actually don't know how to say his last name. Um, but he released an icon set called Genericons that actually shows up in uh, a lot of themes now. Uh, they're, they're included in 2013, uh, yeah, 2013 uh, their most recent uh, default WordPress theme. So it's becoming really a thing. Um, there's... And you don't even need to use uh, icons. You could also use SVGs. Or you don't need to use fonts sometimes. You could also use SVGs, which are scalable vector graphics, I believe. Um, there's a... a th how many of you have heard of Grunt? Cool. I'm not actually <laughs> sure the best way to describe Grunt. Uh, Kadam could probably do it better. Do you want to just like a sure. two-sentence intro to Grunt? It's a tool for developers to automate grunt work. So if you're doing things like copying files from one directory to another over and over and over again, you can set up repeatable tasks so that you can do that automatically. Well, one thing you can do with that is that you could actually uh, give them icons, uh, and I think in, in just like a vector format, and it'll spit out what you can include on the web. So like no work for you, you just, you just throw it in and you like do a task and it like pops them out. And they actually made a, like a GUI interface that was redundant. 
<laughs> they made a site called uh, GrumpyCon. Uh, GrumpyCon. Yeah. Grump. <laughs> okay, this is a little irritating to have to wait for it. Cool. So you can you can drop files onto here, and it will spit out like it'll give you everything you need to include, including uh, the code. So you don't even have to code anything. It like spits it out for you. So super cool tool. And I think Boston Boston based because you guys yeah. do it, right? Cool. Yep. Home so. Grown. <laughs> yeah, you need to give it a vector, like a vector icon. So if you if you're like making your icons in Illustrator, uh, just save it as an SVG and then drop it in, and it like does all the coding work for you. And I think it also gives you PNGs for fallbacks. So there are some browsers that don't support uh, SVGs yet. So it'll spit out uh, PNGs that you could use in those cases. I think it's like the, the browsers you would expect to not support cool things. <laughs> cool. So another awesome theme that I've been seeing uh, with uh, themes recently is better use of content. So do you guys use post formats at all? Yes, what? Post formats. So when you're making a new post, you can choose like, oh, this is an image post, it's a video post, standard post. They're actually not widely used yet because they don't have really good support. But in the past couple months, a couple really cool themes have come out uh, that support the use of post formats. So 2013, the most recent default uh, theme for core so post for, uh, supports post formats. So you see this one as a quote. Uh, this one is in the side, I believe. So they're just different kinds of, of content. And so they give your content a better layout that is dependent on like what you've written. So like a video should look different from an image, should look different from a like a blog entry. Is this all just one column? Yeah, 2013 is all one column. I think it has a sidebar page template. It does. But I think it was put in really like begrudgingly. <laughs> like I don't I don't think they wanted I think they wanted it to just be all one column, but I can't I can't speak to that really. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You could uh, you could child theme it. There's actually a couple trial themes that have already been released for it. Um, so there's a guy called Otto. He's a core contributor. Um, he released a blue version of it. And I think you might just be able to type 2013 blue auto into Google and find it. Um, I'm pretty sure there are some uh, in the .org theme repository. Um, if you, or it's it's easy enough to child theme. So, but yeah, big use of colors. Because this is probably collections is maybe one of the coolest themes I've seen released in the past like three months at least. Um, so I want to actually look at it. So it's built around post formats in a really really beautiful way that I think gives it more meaning than you know many themes do because it's it's making it like you're collecting these sets of images or videos. So you have you know articles. And it just displays them all really beautifully. You know, you could choose images. And it's just a, a new and a different way of displaying content. That does, it's based around what you're, what you're inputting. So instead of a theme guessing, like, oh, I'm going to make one kind of post style and it's all going to look like this, you know, it doesn't matter if you're using photos or if you're, t you know, if you're just doing a text article, it should all look the same. Like, this is a, a good way to be able to see different kinds of content in the way that it should. So it's really a content first approach to WordPress themes. This is one more. It does kind of the, the one column approach again. Yeah. Are these premium or free themes? Some of them are free, some of them are premium. Uh, it's kind of a mix. Um, I think this one might be a Actually, let's find out. Well, oh, I guess I can't do that. Um, it's a mix. <laughs> I kind of just looked at what was out there. Um, and there's actually a, a not a lot of these examples um, in like the .org repository yet, just because it hasn't really trickled down yet. It's still kind of a new thing. But I am seeing a little bit of it. 
So post streams is another trend that I've seen recently. So instead of just having, you know, an article, and then another article, and then another article, and then you go to a different page, uh, it's displaying it a little more creatively. This is a theme called Spun. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a free theme. And it displays your posts in a grid, and it actually uh, uses, I'm pretty sure it's the featured images um, that cause this to display. And then I guess if you don't, it has a title. So instead of just seeing like article and then another article, you, you get more of like a grid view of it. It's taking too long. And then publisher, it's another, uh, it's a premium theme that was uh, released, I think, in the past couple weeks. But it's like Pinterest style. So you just have uh, like a like a tiled grid of posts. And it's cool because you actually, uh, that was weird. <laughs> when you get down to a quote, it has like a different format. So it's, it's taking advantage of both post formats and uh, this type of layout. And then Nexus is another thing. This one I feel like is extra unique with its layout. Um, it's just a lot of like really cool stuff, and then you you hover over it to get the the like the post title and more info. But yeah, so it's just another another example of having a post stream that's represented visually instead of just you know articles one after another. And I feel like I don't have a huge opinion on this trend, unlike some of the other trends. But I thought it was worth noting because I I keep seeing it. So now beyond CMS. So this is where things start to get a little more interesting uh, with trends. Uh, so there's a, uh, a theme called P2 that's made for uh, front-end posting and for interacting on just the front end of your site. You don't ever have to go into WP Admin. Um, it's currently being ported to a plugin. No idea when it's going to be released. Um, but the, the goal is to get this kind of functionality on like any site you want. And we use it internally for core. Um, if you go to make.wordpress.org, um, all the, the blogs on there are running P2s. So it's really easy for us to interact with each other, to comment on each other. And it's actually the way we interact with each other at Automatic. I'd say 80% of the way we, 80 of our communication methods are through P2s. Um, the rest is like a small blend of Skype and IRC. But P2s really dominate. There was a point at which Automatic had more P2s than people. But uh, we've hired like 30 people in the past couple months. <laughs> so kind of hard to catch up. But it's cool. It's like moving away from just like a regular website and turning it into something interactive. And a way, it's like, it, it's, a, it's our own intranet. It's a way to track what everyone's doing in a non-creepy way. So here's another thing called Capsule. So it's, I've heard it described as like a, like a developer code blog. So you can actually add, it's, it's meant for adding in like code snippets that you can edit. And uh, it's really cool. So it's another use uh, of a theme that goes beyond just like a simple website into more towards an, like an organizational thing. And you could use it uh, internally, um, like at your company if you share a lot of code. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. And it's moving more in the direction of uh, WordPress as uh, like an application platform instead of just uh, a CMS or a blogging platform. Anyone else know of any other cool ones like this? I tried to find some, but I think they're, they're pretty new at this point. Cool, guess not. So maybe just these two at this point. So I've also seen, probably in the past year, a move from generalization to specialization. So a lot of the top themes on something like Theme Forest give you everything and anything. And even that thing you didn't want. And that other thing you didn't want. You just get, you just get everything. You know, like, like... Like, get back. <laughs> you get sliders. You get 100 different short codes. You get everything and whatever. So now there's a move towards, instead of having just a bunch of general themes, to make themes for specific markets. So we see this WordPress for blah. Commerce. It's a huge one. There's so many different e-commerce themes right now, and they're all, uh, a lot of them integrate, uh, or they're, they're, 
WooCommerce ready. So you could just plop the WooCommerce plugin right into it, and bam, you have an e-commerce site. Hotels, this is kind of a fun one. I've actually seen at least five or six different hotel themes that are made for people who have like hotels and inns and whatever. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. Real estate, another one that's like kind of popped out out of nowhere. Themes made just for real estate agents that have like built in like property searches and like custom post types for like buildings and apartments and whatnot. Higher education, it's kind of a, an older one because I feel like it's, it's really one of the first like specific themes that I saw come out uh, like of that trend was sites for higher education. And it's kind of interesting because I feel like out of all of the specific ones that I've really seen, and these are just a handful, it's actually the most general because I don't think anyone's ever really figured out exactly what higher ed needs. <laughs> Has anyone seen that XKCD uh, comic that's like, what co like college students are looking for and like what college websites show on their homepage. And there's like nothing in the Venn diagram in the middle. It's like totally different. It's kind of like that. Nonprofits. It's another one that, it, you know, been around for a while. Comics. This is kind of fun. So uh, WordPress.com uh, just released um, a comics theme and it's made for comic artists to put up their, their stuff. So a very specific use case but also something that, you know, is definitely a huge hole in the market. We don't have a lot of comic themes out there. There was at one point a thing called, like a plugin called Comic Press. I don't know what happened to it, but I haven't heard of it in a while. So kind of cool that now themes can kind of take up that, that mantle. Travel. I actually really want to show this one. Whoop. So it has a built-in map. <laughs> uh, so you can like drop things down into the map. So it would be cool for like a travel blog or uh, like a tourism blog. I'm sure you can get it like super close. So I just thought that was one of the, one of the more interesting and unique uh, themes that I had seen. I saw at least one or two others uh, that also kind of took this like huge map travel approach. And so, seems like a cool trend, very specific. So yeah, seriously, there's a WordPress theme for anything now. So if you are like a theme designer or developer, it's a good time to like get into a very specific market. Because people are looking for more specific now instead of general. So another theme. This is pretty much a, an overall web design theme that I've seen is style moving from web design into mobile. So when you know mobile apps and mobile sites first started coming out, they really mimicked the web. And now we're starting to see the opposite. We're seeing the web mimic mobile. And the first example of this is kind of a, a classical navigation. So have any of you heard the term hamburger button? I love this term. So it's the like three line menu that you use to like open like a menu. Uh, it looks apparently like a hamburger, so it's a hamburger button. So now we're seeing more sites uh, where the navigation is by default hidden behind a hamburger button, and then you press it to expand and get the navigation. So this is a good example. So the menu is actually hidden, and you have to click to get it. So it's kind of a different take that was totally, you know, brought from mobile into web. Another example of this is this scene. Boom. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, like we were talking about iOS 7 before, um, there are also specific design trends that are coming into web from mobile. Uh, so this isn't a WordPress theme. I actually couldn't figure out uh, an example of this, but I've been seeing it more in, in like the like regular web ecosystem. Uh, is a, a style stolen from iOS 7, which is kind of like this like blurry translucent overlay. So you have this like kind of like frosted glass overlay over like the blurry photo. And that's something that like really took off in I'd say the past month because of iOS 7. And so now it's like a thing people are requesting. So my prediction is that this is going to happen to a WordPress theme pretty soon. So, OK. 
Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about today is MP6. Have any of you heard of MP6? Cool. So, um, for the past couple months, there's a, been a team of people working on a redesign of the WordPress uh, admin UI. It's mostly a stylistic change. They're pretty limited to just uh, CSS changes. So, like, no, like, PHP or HTML changes. So, looks like this. We're actually going to take a look. Oh, I got to activate it. Cool. So yeah, it uh, looks better when it's uh, not like half responsive right now. Um, so it's moving towards flatter, uh, towards icon fonts in core. Um, it's not totally flat. There's still you know shadows and effects on things like buttons and on these uh, these containers. And one of the reasons we decided to like keep those kinds of effects uh, is because it makes it easier to know what's clickable and what's not. That is a big downfall of, of flat, is sometimes you don't know what's a button and what's just a block. So by keeping some of these shadows, some of these gradients, some of these highlights, it makes it more obvious, like, oh, this is a button. I should pay attention to it. So yeah, it's just uh, an update, visual update. Hopefully, we'll be in core for 3.8. And so, another fun thing uh, that we've been thinking about with it is color schemes. So, being able to add alternate color schemes or pack in all, uh, different color schemes into core. So, here we have a few. I'm actually going to go and activate them. Actually, Kelly wrote this part for MP6. So, uh, uses. So it uses a less to generate color schemes. So here's mom, nice and, you know, seaweedy. <laughs> Ghostbusters is my favorite. So it looks kind of like, you know, like... The colors are a little bit weird on the projector. Oh, they are, yeah, they do look a little weird on the projector. But it's, it's like, like, did any of you used to drink, like, Ecto Cooler, High C or whatever? It's kind of like that, inspired it's by that. Green. <laughs> yeah, oh, let's look at 80s kids. So this one's a little ridiculous. <laughs> I don't see many people using this, but... Uh, so yeah, just playing around with different color schemes. It actually, uh, using the, the less method, it only takes five lines of code to be able to produce a color scheme. So it actually only, uh, it takes three colors and it builds a scheme off of that. It's pretty cool. So... That's MP6, and I'm done. Thanks. Any questions? Yes. So you mentioned that the it tends to like bubble up from like client sites to premium to free. Mm -hmm. What do you see if you give this presentation in a year as like something that's on the horizon? Um, I'd say much more, uh, more mobile stuff going stuff that like you see in responsive sites or mobile sites and apps going more towards the web uh, and more uh, iOS 7 influence once iOS 7 is released I expect to see more sites kind of following that same aesthetic um, something people have talked about now is like oh you know iOS 7 is using these you know thin super thin icons maybe we should move towards it and I think that's a bad idea because it's actually harder to understand like line icons instead of uh, solid icons it actually takes more, like, more cognitive load to be able to process them. So, that's what I would I would expect. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. I think it's super hot right now. Um, and it's going to become more common, uh, especially as more people use post formats. And, you know, more, I think the more themes support post, support post formats, the more people who use them, the more themes will want to include them. So, yes? How important is it to keep up? Um, you know, I say this because I, I was asked to do some more work, and I wasn't, I wasn't really Well, all the startups are doing it. Uh, so what? 
Yeah. Just because they're doing it doesn't mean you have to do it. How long have you been blogging? How long have you been blogging? Me? Yeah, you A long time. Yeah. Oh, with me? I've been doing it a long time. Yeah, but what difference does that make? I mean, I mean, do you want to be like contemporary or? Well, that's my. I mean, that's the question. It's just that's my question. Mm -hmm. It's not me. It's not the my part. So I think that good design is timeless. Um, there are lots of sites out there uh, that don't necessarily adhere to any trends but are great, like Amazon. Amazon is probably you know, one of the best websites, one of the most money-making websites in the entire world. And they don't really follow any trends, they kind of make their own trends. Their decisions for design are based entirely on, uh, upon research and upon their users. So a site that you make that looks good and like looks really good is always gonna look good. But it's when you start falling onto just using trends that your site's going to look dated in like two years. So like you look back now into some of the older themes on Theme Forest, and they're like, oh god, this is like so awkward because they're like the same site essentially. They're like this, all the same theme. They all look the same. They all got this like the Nouveau slider and like whatever that one slider that everyone uses. They all have like the same layout, and it's awkward. So that's a little bit of a problem with using like a free theme or a, a premium theme out of the box is that how many other people are going to use the same theme. So you should always look good, but looking good doesn't necessarily mean following, following any of these trends. So, and I would argue against looking the same as everyone else, but not everybody can innovate all the time. You don't, you know, you don't have the time, you don't have the budget. So when it comes down to it, just, you know, choose something that looks good and that works well. And sometimes it's a trend. Yeah. So that's something that hasn't really been decided on yet in the web community is the best way to serve up images at different sizes and like responsive images like should you show a, a totally different image you know on this view or on this view um, I don't really have an answer to that <laughs> I think it's, it's still being explored like how can we make like images look good on all these different resolutions at all these different sizes well you know not like Loading like a 4,000 by 4,000 pixel image on your phone. There's been tons of work on it actually. Yeah. Um, that's why it's been really good. I mean, uh, when um, say, um, the Markov team said refresh blocks in the store, we talked about this, uh, his uh, picture. There's going to be a picture. Picture, picture fill? Or is yeah, it something else? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the, it's an HTML, but, but there are lots of, just to answer a question, there are lots of uh, plugins and workarounds and things. But that's the thing, they're all workarounds. There's nothing... But that's what you can do right now. Yeah, exactly. It's, not it's, it's awkward. We're in an intermediary, an intermediary phase where we're still trying to react to the devices. So in, we're, we're constantly reacting to what's coming out instead of like planning for the future or reacting to the future. Yeah, there's actually a company called Fresh Salt Soil in Watertown uh, that's been doing some cool, like, fun experimental work with, uh, I think they're resizing images on, like, I don't know. They're, they've been doing some cool work, so it's, like, in their blog. Um, but there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff that people are doing, but, like, none of it is, like, in, like, standards yet. So... What I will say, if you're working on your own site, you can upload a full resolution image to WordPress and your theme can register the size that it wants to show that at. So you should, if you have a you know, full resolution image, you can go ahead and upload that. Most web hosts don't put a very heavy cap on your disk use, it's just your bandwidth. So that way you will have the full resolution image to work with once a standard does get vetted down and once more things are adopted. I mean, it's, 
it's not infinitely scalable like Vector is. Um, the simple rule of thumb is you get a sort of double resolution images to render the bunch of money because it will shrink down so it will be sharper. So you notice this in the 200 by 400, say the 400 by 800, right? And then automatically on a retina device, they will scale it down so it'll be much sharper than it would have been if you had sent the original size. That's like just to get started, right? Yeah. And these, these are all workarounds still, which is the problem. There's like, there's nothing that we know for sure will be like in the like HTML 6, 7 spec one day. Um, there is an, uh, a picture well, tag, I think. People are. Track, so that's what the, the polytool does. It does what the system is going to do. Yeah. I'm also not a developer, <laughs> so. Um, any other questions? Are those P6 color schemes available anywhere, or is that? Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, currently a branch of MP6, so you can. Um, the left is a branch. Uh, we're also scraping it as fast, and uh, we'll be at the top of MP6. Yeah. So that's, that's all, another thing that we're thinking about for. Uh, for MP6 is adding a preprocessor um, for the CSS, but we haven't decided on lesser SAS yet. SAS. <laughs> We're trying both, you know. SAS. So does any does anyone have a reason for less versus SAS other than I like one? There we go. <laughs> Yeah, it could be either. either way. So if you have really strong opinions about lesser SAS, there's a ticket of this uh, for this in track. <laughs> and you should put your opinions into that ticket because they're going to help us decide on which one to use. Uh, Preprocessor. Cool. Okay, so it's ticket number 22862 if you're interested in getting involved in the conversation. Uh, <laughs> A lot, but not. Oh, okay. So, sixty-four, I think, comments. <laughs> cool. Anything else? Nope. Okay, we're done. <laughs>